This episode of My Two Satoshis is brought to you by AdBank Network's newest software called Blade. Blade is a revolutionary ad blocking software that earns you ADB tokens while browsing the web and simultaneously blocking all other ads. Visit www.blade.software to learn more details and download their Chrome extension. Find the link in the description below. Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of my Two Satoshis. It is June 16th, 2019. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Shout out to my man Sarge Crypto for that song request today. Nipsey Hustle and DJ Khaled. Got John Legend on that joint too. Higher. This is a nice joint right here. R.I.P. to a king, Nipsey Hustle. Still can't believe that guy's gone. But hey, happy Father's Day to everybody on YouTube watching today. Welcome to another episode. We are going to be looking at... First of all, Bitcoin, that break above the channel was the bullish sign. And I think we even got above the trend line. We'll take a look at the chart here in a minute. Overall, looking very bullish in the markets right now. But today we're going to be looking at more exchanges limiting the uh, ability for U.S. citizens to trade cryptocurrencies. Bitrix, as of recently, Gate.io joins as well with restricting U.S. traders. We'll take a look at that. And also, <laughs> we're going to take a look at what's going on with this florida court they're ordering uh old bitcoin inventor quote unquote craig wright to show up or shut up he's ordered to come into court but they're like yo you got to come into court We're, enough is enough and we may even lock your ass up <laughs> so uh we'll take a look at this article out of ccn regarding that uh lastly i want to look at this article some venture capitalists have been talking about a supply shock on bitcoin and, and it you know we got a halvening coming up in 2020 with bitcoin and it really may cause an effect a positive effect on the price of bitcoin so you may want to start accumulating if you haven't you know i've been telling you guys 3k was the lowest we would go i was accumulating that 35 36 38 range we're heading higher but you still probably have a chance to get in at decent prices and also have a neat graphic Shout, uh, shout out to my man John B on Twitter for sharing this with me. And so he shared this great chart, man. We're going to take a look at this. This should really give you some FOMO. If there ain't nothing else giving you FOMO on Bitcoin, this surely will. This chart is basically showing you and tracking, you know, Bitcoin's price right before halvening and its correlation to price and projected pricing. And uh, I think this is going to be a, a shocker to you guys as far as where Bitcoin is going to be before the next halving or at least right around the next halving it's going to make these current prices look very cheap so we'll take a look at all of that as well but first before we get into it my channel sponsors the promo for moon lambo tees is now 10 percent it's been reduced to 10 percent you guys got a chance to still save money on those crypto apparel items from moonlambotees.com so check them out you can use the word crypto blood 10 now for 10 percent off your purchases also smartcash.cc voted number one crypto in brazil in 2018 definitely check that cryptocurrency out faster than visa and mastercard and no processing fees so again shout out to my channel sponsors for today let's go ahead and take a look at this heat map we've got bitcoin up about a percent today it's come back a lot it was up i think nearly at ninety four hundred dollars people bitcoin ethereum is at 265 down almost a percent bitcoin cash is up about 1.2 percent right now at 423 dollars and eos is at six dollars and ninety cents it was up near seven dollars and thirty cents yesterday so we got a slight pullback let's go ahead and take a look at this technical analysis for bitcoin again i haven't done a video in a day or so so a lot has changed remember that i told you guys this bounce off the back side of the top of the channel gave me a bullish indication and i thought that we would be testing the next trend line above and that's it's surely what we did so if i extend this trend line out you will see here what i mean perfectly so check that out people so we ran up to it kind of ran into some resistance on that trend line but finally broke above it and we shot up after that we even uh one hour candle as you can see fully engulfed this run up so this is slightly bearish this type of move here to see this type of uh 
uh, bearish and golf candle as we did see back here on the 30th of May same type of scenario I did get back into the markets uh, with the rest of my dry powder after touching and closing above this area here this trend line remember that I sold out 30 35 percent of my position here on May 30th because of that bearish and golf candle and ended up putting half the powder back in at this level 7900 and was just waiting for a breakout and put the rest in at 8700 area this is somewhat of a concern here to see this bearish and golf candle again on the one hour chart took out a lot of that run up in one hour at this point if i see a break below i would have to say if we see a break below 8600 i'm gonna have to take take the money off the table again and uh wait until we maybe hit 8000 area but i i don't think we're going to see any lower moves in bitcoin i think we're definitely heading higher we took out the last high so that's a bullish signal for me 9000 we got above that we were at 94 495 we touched actually so overall it's still a bullish move in my opinion in bitcoin i'm bullish for sure been bullish really since uh 3k 31 3200 but short term uh we may see a slight pullback to you know these areas if we break this trend line if we don't break the trend line then uh we're gonna be heading higher no pun intended heading higher so we'll have to see what happens uh in the next day or so so the first article out of trust knows and again we're seeing more and more of this happening people wake up u.s citizens you got to see what's going on here government is kind of starting their wage war against cryptocurrencies i think in preparation for the next financial crisis they want to be able to control those on and off ramps for cryptocurrencies so start paying attention to what's going on here Bitrix bans U.S. customers from trading Omizigo, Status, Melon, and many more cryptocurrencies. It says here that Bitrix, one of the biggest cryptocurrencies, has stated U.S. customers will be unable to trade numerous coins and tokens starting later this month. It says U.S. customers will be sent an email communication from Bitrix that provides guidance on what they can and cannot do with their affected coins and tokens in connection with this change before an affected market is no longer accessible non-us residents are unaffected americans on the other hand can no longer trade on bitrix amizigo status melon and many other cryptocurrencies including coins like nxt so look at this huge list people adx cvc that's civic i believe omg as they stated pay block pro i mean there's so many is 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 really depressing this is this is just unacceptable and we should be uh more upset but we're not you know us we, we still think we're number one in everything and oh it's okay we're we're number one in the world the article goes on to say the ones starting with adt are to stop trading on june the 21st the ones above starting with adx are to stop trading on june 28th both apply to us customers only they say certain markets will soon become unavailable to us customers those markets will generally continue to be available to bitrix international customers currently bitrix international features 200 plus tokens and coins for non-us customers and we anticipate that we will continue to add innovative blockchain projects to bitrix international in the future it's unclear whether these are the only markets to be banned for us customers or whether more are to be announced with bitrix further not stating why they have taken this decision only saying like other industry participants we will continue to advocate for laws and regulations that foster innovation well there you have it people this came out yesterday at least from trust knows but also gate.io another exchange clamping down so what i'm what i'm seeing here is is a is a pattern they're not telling us that they were ordered to do any of this but we we have to assume that some agency uh from the u.s has contacted all of these exchanges with something what it is we don't know but this should let you know that these agencies are getting ahead of the next financial crisis in my opinion they want to be able to restrict all inflows of fiat capital into this crypto game i was talking to uh gaston cruz on a kicking it session and i told him 
cryptocurrencies is essentially a black hole for fiat currency because there's unlimited amount of fiat currencies hypothetically that can be created in in the, in the global system but there are limited or finite numbers of cryptocurrencies you know there may be thousands of cryptocurrencies out there but for each cryptocurrency there is a limited a number of those tokens so that creates an asymmetrical situation there or or relationship unlimited amount of fiat versus limited amount of tokens and coins so it's, it's a black hole it's going to just push these prices up even some of the shit coins are just going to go through the roof in the case of a crisis a financial crisis so they're trying to restrict and get control of that before it happens they're trying to play two or three steps ahead here i think personally we're probably a year six to a year away from anything really heating up in the equities market they're going to keep kicking the can they're going to start reducing rates the fed they're going to start reducing rates here shortly and once we get near zero and they back themselves back into the corner you'll start to see the aha moment happen in the equities and you'll you'll see people fleeing but until then you're going to see a melt up with all asset classes that are priced against fiat so you're just trying to get control of this in my opinion you guys let me know your thoughts but yes gate dot io also clamping down on u.s citizens and uh restricting them from trading so it says here after binance bitrix polonex and other markets set limitations to the activity of u.s based traders gate.io joins the list with restrictions so they got a list here and includes coins like ripple eos but also tokens and other assets offering payouts the reason for this is that digital assets that pay out a form of a dividend may be considered securities this means that the neo and the gas assets are now banned to u.s investors as well as ontology quantum wavix and nim are also out of reach for traders though those platforms simply offer a utility token pezos is also taking another hit as the asset is also seen as a dividend bearing based on the baking process so it's interesting to see that uh they're taking it off but Coinbase still has Tezos on there, I believe. This is uh, this is crazy. And I've also got some other materials, some links and articles and images that I may do tonight on an off the chain episode. I've got a new format that I'm going to do and test out. I hope you guys enjoy it. I would definitely love to hear your feedback on it. So if I end up doing it off the chain tonight, I'll share those articles and, and documents and, and images it's just getting out of hand people i hope you guys are waking up and seeing the war being waged against cryptocurrencies and our uh, rights to have financial freedom but anyhow next article out of ccn it says here court orders fake toshi craig wright to put up or shut up it says here florida judge ordered craig wright the self-proclaimed inventor of bitcoin to put up or shut up if he wants to prove that he's satoshi nakamoto in a june 14th motion to compel federal magistrate judge bruce reinhardt ordered wright to produce a list of all bitcoin he mined prior to december 31st 2013 the judge set a june 17th deadline for wright to produce the list of his bitcoin holdings or face court ordered sanctions in the decision <laughs> judge reinhardt said Wright has not explained why he cannot obtain the necessary encryption keys to comply with his prior order. The judge was referring to his 2019 March ruling when he directed Wright to produce the evidence. At the time, Wright rattled off a laundry list of excuses for why he couldn't comply. First, Wright claimed that he couldn't produce the list because it's unduly burdensome. He said that this was because in 2010 he stopped keeping track of the public addresses for the bitcoins he had mined then wright insisted that he had transferred ownership of all bitcoin into a blind trust in 2011 however the judge is now fed up and wants wright to produce evidence that sustains his contention that he is satoshi nakamoto the judge wrote he has not explained why he cannot obtain and has not obtained the necessary keys from their third parties at this point the record before the court fails to demonstrate that dr wright cannot through reasonable diligence comply with the court's march 14th order the court will allow the parties to develop a full evidentiary record before it decides whether sanctions are warranted moreover the judge ordered wright to appear in person 
before the court on June 28th to explain why he shouldn't be held in contempt for failing to comply with his March order. Ooh, this is getting spicy here, people. So we'll see what happens. Do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Will Craig Wright show up in court on June 28th? I think he's so delusional that he literally might show up. I think he's lied to himself so much that to make himself believe he's Satoshi Nakamoto. I hope he does show up and I hope they lock his ass up. Final article out of Coin Speaker. Bitcoin halving will trigger supply shock warns venture capitalists. It says here a Bitcoin halving is a fixed event and will occur after every 210,000 blocks mined. Still Mark Capital Analyst says that she thinks that there will be an even greater demand for Bitcoin. No, really? <laughs> this is nothing new, analysts. This is what happens every halvening. The largest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, seems to have something to worry about. This week, it was literally swept off by one of the biggest rivals, Litecoin. Even though we cannot say that Bitcoin performed badly, fourth biggest cryptocurrency has risen by more than 300% this year and is up a staggering 43% over the past month. It is presumed that the investors are looking towards a cut in its supply schedule for August known as a halvening. The article goes on to say here, the truth is that Bitcoin's price has more than doubled this year and US venture capitalists are praising its progression. Nevertheless, they are warning that the market is heading for a supply shock thanks to next year's closely watched Bitcoin halvening event. Elise Killing, manager partner at Stillmark Capital, says that what is actually happening is an anticipation of a coming supply shock in 2020. She says in 2020, we'll have just half the daily supply of Bitcoin that we do now. While we're looking ahead to this supply shock and halving event, we're also seeing greater demand for Bitcoin and new on ramps for more familiar and conventional sources. There's the anticipation that there will be a broader group of users and consumers who have an appetite for Bitcoin. Matty Greenspan also said, he's the analyst over at eToro, he said, as we're dealing with the emerging asset class, crypto evaluation metrics are still largely being developed. Stocks, bonds, currencies, and commodities all have decades, if not centuries of price discovery, so analysts more or less know what to expect. He also explained that the crypto market has only begun to mature in the past uh, year or two, and that what does work well for crypto analysts are simple technical analysis tools like support and resistance points. That's what crypto blood uses, especially psychological barriers, as well as sentiment trend and above all momentum indicators. I mean, they're kind of stating the obvious here, but I saw on Twitter yesterday, and this, this was a great point. Um, many people, and this may be uh, partially why we're seeing a run up in Bitcoin now. We've got Binance uh, closing out to US consumers in the next 90 days. Bitrix closing out on a lot of coins, gate.io, all of these exchanges are forcing uh, US citizens to liquidate. What are they going to liquidate into? Bitcoin. So I thought her uh, tweet about forced liquidations into Bitcoin because of these exchanges is a valid one. That may be somewhat of the catalyst that we're seeing in the move up. I think we're a little early for the FOMO as far as the halving, uh, we'll probably see that six months out start to happen. You know, I think we still got a lot to run up in, in Bitcoin ahead of this uh, halving in 2020. Now, what I do want to show you guys before we get out of here, and I got to give a shout out to John B on Twitter on this one. He said one hell of a chart. And I'm going to show you guys this chart here. This is the chart. I've zoomed in on it. And as you can see, this chart looks very accurate to me. We've got on the uh, X axis. The years, Y axis, Bitcoin's value in USD. And so what these dots are is essentially a price plot of Bitcoin. And this gradient area shows us how many months we are away from the next halvening. So as you can see, the halvening, it runs up towards the halvening and then it starts to head up and then we'll see a pullback. It happens every time. So in 2017, or actually 16 is when the last time we had a halving. You see the run up as we head uh, into the halving. This plotted line is the price projection through their uh, stock flow model price equation they've cr created here. This predicts where we're going and it's been pretty accurate so far. Coming up on 2020, they're showing and predicting that Bitcoin will skyrocket to almost 100K uh, as the halvening 
event occurs in 2020. I can surely believe that. And this is with no extraneous events. We're not talking about a black swan, debt crisis, credit freeze. This is just strictly fundamentally what happens in within Bitcoin in, in, in you know its mechanism and how it runs. So this is not adding in there any extraneous events that may occur between now and the halvening. So just keep that in mind, people. So without anything else, we should see near 100K, not quite at 100, maybe about $90,000, $85,000 Bitcoin after the next halving. And then in 2025, we'll see another uh, move up here. And that one should take us above 100K into 1 million. So interesting uh graphic here and I, again shout out to my man john b for that one he's always dropping gems on twitter so that's pretty much it for today ladies and gents i hope you enjoyed all those articles that we went over let me know your thoughts about all of it bitrix ban gate.io banning u.s citizens as well court ordering fake toshi to come in on june 28th you guys think he's going to come in or he's going to flake out on him and then lastly the halvening event coming up next year that chart really shows us some uh some really concrete evidence on where price will be during and at, slightly after the halving let me know your thoughts on all of those in the comments below don't forget crypto blood 10 promo code at moon lambo tees for 10 percent off if you guys are interested shout out to my man sarge crypto for that song request nipsey hustle dj Khaled, higher definitely going higher in bitcoin <laughs> it's your boy crypto blood <laughs> make sure you guys like share and subscribe to help grow this channel. That's my two Satoshi. Happy Father's Day. I'm out of here. Holla.